you cannot tell me to add detail. You have to show me how. And when I say how, I mean the ways. And there are all different kinds. Liz and I spent a lot of time researching, reading strong, well-written anchor papers from first graders and eighth graders and 12th graders and all grades in between. And we started to notice, okay, this one added information like this. This one included information like this. Ooh, a supporting detail on this. Ooh, a sentence on this. Ooh, this is good. And what we discovered, what we discovered was that everything seemed to fall into one of six types of details. And we saw the same six evident in kindergarten writing as we did in AP English writing. The six types are there in those colored boxes to the right. Let me just briefly mention each of the six, and then we'll look at them more carefully and specifically here in a moment. When I say description, I mean that it had probably some of the senses, a sentence or two that include relevant sentences or comparisons, metaphors, similes, it's bigger than, larger than, as fast as, included some comparisons, or, or it named specific types of something. It described it by telling you it was a type of something. Again, there's so many different ways to describe, you know, five cent, it looks like, smells like, you know, all those kinds of things. But if you add that kind of detail, you're adding sentences. Or some of the supporting leg sentences to a tabletop paragraph, let's say, included terms. It used content area, C-A, content area specific vocabulary. Domain specific vocabulary. It even sometimes defined it, used definition details. This means, a synonym for this is, it explains what its purpose, function, or meaning is. Hey. This also primary sometimes included a sentence using an onomatopoeia word. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. -O -O -E okay, that's the only way I can do it. And so it used a, you know, a splat or a pop or a zap. Again, depending on what they're writing about, they just added another sentence, exclamation point. How about action verbs? Action verbs we associate with this topic. See, by using stronger action verbs, you write more sentences. You have more to say. You've got to teach me ways to develop. Don't just tell me I need to add more. I know. But kids look at you, and they're like, uh-huh, okay, I need to make it longer. Got it, yeah. Like what? Like what should I add? This is the idea of teaching them how to do it so that they can do it forevermore. Well, you could add vocabulary words. And again, I'm going to roll each of these out specifically, separately, explicitly. Kids could add proof. What do you mean by proof? Okay, examples are proof. Facts, statistics, numbers, dates, all, all of that is proof. I call that hard proof because I think there's also soft proof. I call that voices. For me, voices is soft proof. Hard proof, can't argue with. Facts, statistics, dates. Soft proof might be things like quotes, feelings, opinions, different perspectives or point of view. To me, that's soft proof. Sometimes they could add a sentence or two by just clarifying, restating, summarizing. What did you say? Just summarize the idea in another sentence. Add a because sentence. Not that it starts with because, but you add something that clarifies an idea. A because sentence adds a sentence. Clarify what you just said. Be more clear. You can add sentences by answering this question. So what? Who cares? What's your point? What's the impact? What's the consequence? What's the significance of this reason, this, this detail, this facet that you're describing? So what? That happened. Big deal. What's the consequence? Hey, you can add a lot of sentences. Again, I believe all six of these fit all grade levels. What I wrote in marker may be a little different depending on your grade level, but I think we all can teach all of the types. 